Good morning, I am Florencia Pecorari, a teacher at Viva King Cooper Educational Center, the Miami-Dade County Public Schools, and I'm doing a presentation on the individual activity schedule impact with dual diagnosis of IMD and ASD. This is on behalf of the School of Education in Florida International University. Um, the study is based on a new reality that we're facing in the school of a center school and with all the students in a modified curriculum with IMD, intellectual disability. The landscape of the self-contained classroom for students with intellectual disability has been shifted to uh, an increasing uh, prevalence of dual diagnosis cases involving ASD leading to changes in dynamics in the classroom and in the uh, routines. Published research shows uh, in 2020 that there is um, a rise of di dual diagnosis or ASD diagnosis of exceptionalities uh, based on the one in every 36 students of eight years old are being diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. That means that our classrooms are facing now students with this um, diagnosis um, in, in their IEPs. And the dynamic of the classroom has been changed and uh, the, not because of the ISD, although I'm not criticizing this at, at all, but what I am saying is that the characteristics and behaviors are completely different of the students with ASD and their intellectual disabilities or students with physical impairment or, or visual impairment. So um, I have noticed this um, behavior change and the dy dynamic change in the classroom and I decided to make this study on behalf of the um, unique characteristics of these students. And, um, while I'm saying this, I am going to explain that in the classroom, in the self-contained classroom with uh, students with IMD, ASD, and other exceptionalities, uh, regardless of the study or not, we use augmentative and alternate communication devices, we use positive reward system, and we use also the least to most uh, prompting um, to elevate the independence of the student. To make uh, the, the materials and methods of the test have been involved into an uh, individual activity schedule. The question, the research question, is how does providing individual activity schedules impact frustration behaviors in a student with dual diagnosis of IMD and ASD in a self-contained classroom? Saying that, the, and as I explained before, positive reward system was uh, placed in the student um, desk and in the, all, all in the classroom where all the students have their preference of reward and they choose what they want to be uh, rewarded after doing their activity. Another, um, tool or material that it was used during the, the, the intervention was the student's AATC device teams. The student used an augmentative and alternate communication device. She has a special um, page for emotions and all her feelings are there. She just tells you what she feels and how she feels on that moment. And then the specialized individual activity schedule for that individual student that it was targeted is a self-trained um, study. The visual individual schedule is as it's a visual, it has the red, circle, blue, and triangle in yellow. And I have it in here. The student plays, has this schedule placed on her desk. And then the task that are three different trays that matches with each shape and color and are here as well. So the student, when the, at 12 p.m. when the, the individual activity schedule time comes, receives a verbal cue. Plus the visual cue that she has on her desk that is the individual activity schedule. So she received the verbal cue of 
time to do your work. And so she goes and she touches. If she doesn't touch it by herself, as I said before, we wait and we use least to most prompting. So I point. And she goes to the shelf where the activities are prepared for her and she grabs the square. The square activity has the square on and she goes, takes the activity to her desk and performs the activity. When she finished doing the activity, she will put it back on the shelf. After doing that activity, the student brings, comes to the table and get again the circle. She goes to her tray, to her desk, she performs the activity, and then she puts it back on her desk. After doing that, when she performs the triangle, she starts doing it, and when she finishes, she puts it back. At the end, and at the beginning, the student is asked. How are you feeling today? Or how are you feeling now? When she starts, she answers with her device. I'm feeling, she goes to her feelings, and she says, feelings. Whatever she says, I don't know. Happy. Happy. Maybe she would say angry. I don't know how she feels right now, but I'm just showing. And then when she finished everything, the student approached to her and asked her again, how are you feeling? Angry. And she answers back. Happy the way that she feels. And that's the end of the individual activity schedule for the student. Now I'm going to explain you how did I collect data to prove that their individual activity schedule works for students with ANC and ALM. The first tool that I used to collect data was the baseline um, pre and post intervention. On this baseline, what I did is I marked the frequency the first day, the day one of the um, activity schedule without knowing what she has to do, her behaviors baseline. So as you see, I have the frequency of behaviors and I have the behaviors that she showed in that moment that I observed and she showed. So I noted and I tally all of them. And as you see, the pre and post intervention that I collection highlights the effectiveness of the individual activity schedule in positively influenced seeing the student behavior, particularly evident significant decrease in instances of healing herself. And you can see that healing herself at the beginning, the first day, day zero, was on this blue, and the decrease showed an 80%, 81.82% of decrease of uh, behavior the last day of the intervention after eight weeks of performing the activity. I think that that's substantial and it gives us a very good sense of that the activity work for this student. Then the substantial decrease shows that, of, for example, the screaming, the, um, the screaming behavior decreased as well, as well as the clapping hands decreased as well, but also I can demonstrate an increase on the on-task behavior. As you see on the first one that it was a baseline day, pre-assessed, pre-intervention, she showed the blue one and then on-task behavior increased in an 80%. So that shows at the beginning with the first tool, that there is improvement. The second tool that I used to prove uh, this research question is the real-time observation and anecdotes. And I based this on um, while the student was performing the activity every day. So she was performing twice a week, the student was uh, observed by me and I was recording all the anecdotes of the student. And I, Divided them, since well, they were observations, I divided them in, in behavior themes. And I found out that we had positive behavior themes that are the blue ones, and negative behavior themes that are the red ones. And again, a 
and this is lining and aligned to this data collection that we found alignment on what? On that the student likes to work on tasks and the student also show a 40% of certain behaviors of reflecting engagement on the activities, that she was happy doing the activities. Like, um, Needed, she needed to be cute. She need, she was the student was focused on the activity, on this one. Uh, so the the student showed that she wanted acknowledgement. That she what I was telling you before when I was explaining the new reality. No matter what we are doing, we use that descriptive feedback with the students, and it works very well with them. So she was looking for that. What, um, and this was an implication that I would like to explain, is um, that in, as a negative influence in the, in the, in the observation anecdotal, I found it that the student was um, like rushing to move to the next activity, like needed approval to move to the next activity. And this one is the one that is showing this. And, what I found in that moment is that on the first four weeks of the um, intervention, I saw that the student was rushing to do the last activity, the triangle. So, since that's why we observed, um, I decided to change the triangle activity to the circle and the circle to the triangle to see what happened if the student was going to perform better and not rushing that much on into this one. And she did. As soon as I switch it, it looks like the student liked it more to work first on this activity than in this one, but it never changed her frustration. It was that she was rushing. So that's one implication that I would like to announce is that uh, probably um, we have to make changes, but that's part of what, what we're doing, observing and making changes for the students to work better. In, uh, on task. So again, we align with the first one, uh, with the first data collection. The third data tool that I used was the pre and post emotional survey, the one that I used for this. Uh, so every day when I was collecting data, the student will tell me how she was feeling before doing the intervention, the activity, and then at the end. And I, um, I tally uh, the, the first and the, and the post, uh, and here is the amount of days that she said and that at the beginning of, the, before doing the activity are in blue, and after doing the activity are in uh, orange. And the pre and post emotional survey highlights, again, a positive trend in the student's emotional well-being with consistent feelings of being happy, around an 80%. But there is, there is an improve because at the beginning, she was, she showed less time. So the conclusion says, students are coming, <laughs> um, that the student, um, the research question says, and proves how providing individualized activity schedules impact uh, frustration behavior in a student with dual diagnosis of IND and ASD. As you see, all the data aligns into that the student shows happiness, that the student shows being on task twice, and the student shows in general the well-being. As a, an end of conclusion and implications I will say that also the student showed to the whole class and represented, was represented as a role model of the classroom. She um, finalized the, the role model because other students wanted to do the same, but a professional oh. started to work on, on with her uh, and with other students making this 